heroine action series, female dominated horror and sci-fi audio adventures. A crackling squawk came from the tiny speakers built into the walls of the commuter train. A cough, then a voice explaining there would be a delay from an obstruction on the track. An animal or something. Laura cursed in frustration. Shit. She looked at the man seated across from her. He was smiling, but his eyes were a bit concerned. Laura dialed it back a bit. I'm Uther. What's your name, friend? Laura smiled, embarrassed at her outburst. Laura. Looks like we'll be stuck together for a bit. Laura shrugged and looked at her wristwatch. It was set to a countdown, 30 minutes and ticking away. My daughter is home. She's sick. Not all the time, but it's a chronic thing. Tonight is going to be pretty bad. I needed to get medicine for her. I didn't think it would take me this long. Uther nodded and sat back. It's hard to imagine a just God when one spends time with afflicted children. We must have faith despite this. I will pray for you both. After that, they shared a comfortable silence. Then the train lurched and began to move. Laura felt the sweat dripping down her back and sighed with relief. Outside, the sun has set and the streetlights have turned on. The train kept moving, passing out of the central city and into the forest. The regular lights next to the tracks gradually grew fewer in between until the only light was at the front of the train. Laura stood and looked into the driver's compartment. The bottom half of the glass was frosted to give the driver a degree of privacy, but the top portion was clear and gave a view of the tracks ahead. The train slowed down again, and a woman in the compartment tisked loudly. Oh no! Are we stopping again? Laura looked at her and pegged her for a tourist. Even worse, an American tourist. She was wearing a fur cap that was sold by street vendors in the city center. No, the train has to slow down in case there is something on the track. We should speed up after the next stop. What animals would be big enough to stop a train? Miss? Wolves? Probably not moose, but wolves. Maybe. They've been spotted this far east the last few years, but I didn't think a wolf could stop a train. They're just like big dogs. Laura looked at him steadily. Wolves have less in common with dogs than you do with a gorilla. Laura looked back at the lights shining on the track. The gears on the train slowed, then shuddered to a halt. Laura felt a small nausea turning in her gut. They should not be stopping. There is no good reason to stop here. None whatsoever. The conductor spoke over the crackling intercom. Um, good evening, passengers. There is a service light on the track ahead, most likely due to a prior obstruction. Just to be safe, we're going to check it out. Shouldn't take very long. Thanks so much for your patience. A collective groan from the passengers. What stop is yours? I'm the next stop. I could walk it. You live out here. Outside the train, a light flicked on and the driver walked past the window, looking at the bottom of the train. I have a cabin out here. Must be nice to be out of the city. Hey, what's that sound? A low growl builds in intensity. It sounds like growling. There's a commotion in the car behind them. The light flickers off. Something heavy hits the car with enough force to send a shudder through the whole train. <gasps> OMG! The conductor! The passengers rush towards the back. From the corner of the train, the driver's light is visible under the car behind them. As it rolls, the light flashes up and shines on the driver's face. His eyes rolled back and his mouth open. He has three deep bleeding slashes across his face. From the shadow, something grabs and pulls him under the train. The driver screams a quick, loud bark that is abruptly cut off. God! What was that? Did you see his face? Where did he go? The older man next to her, with a shabby coat, became hysterical and grabbed Becky by the shoulders. We need to get out of here. Now. Get your hands off me, crazy old cooter. Becky shook him off. The car was ripe with a sour tension. It felt about to burst. The train shook again. From outside, there was the sound of wrenching metal and a low growl. Uther had read that tigers could make sounds so low that it would freeze their prey. He felt his guts churning as he willed himself to move. People in the car behind him started screaming and the cars thrashed again. That got him moving. He stood up and grabbed Laura. We need to get out of here. Laura pointed to the emergency window. Let's get that open and get to the engine. If we can get in, I can get the train started. Uther looked wild-eyed and pale but nodded. Laura let him go and reached under the seat to a bright red box. She twisted the cable attached to it and pulled. Suddenly, people were screaming and running from something that moved fast. 
Laura pulled out three road flares with the plastic caps from the drawer. Becky was sitting next to the window. She had her arms crossed and was shaking with fear. Laura approached her gently. There was no time for this. She needed more than one person to open the door. What is your name? It's Becky. Becky, we need to get moving. The screams grew louder from the other car, and the sound of a wild animal thrashing about. Becky screamed and buried her head into her knees. Laura pulled her head up gently. Then she opened her palm and slapped Becky across the face and shook her shoulders. Becky, we need to run. I can get the train moving, but I need your help. Cut out this damsel in distress bullshit. No one is coming to save us. We have to help each other. Will you help me? Becky looked up at her with pouty lips and nodded. Laura nodded back. Uther, pull this latch. Becky, when I say now, pull on the door to open it. What if that thing gets in here? That thing will get in here either way. We don't want to be in here when it does. Now! Uther pulled the latch. Becky pulled on the door. Laura pulled on the other side of the door and it squealed open. Laura slipped out of the door. She pulled the cap from one of the sticks and the flare burst into green fire. Let's go! Now! Laura took aim and threw the flare away from the train. The light set an arc of green haze that illuminated a massive shadow that smashed through the window of the car behind them and headed out to the woods in pursuit. She glanced at the car it had left saw for a moment the carnage and the floor slick with blood, then turned to the other car. Let's go! Laura ran for the front of the train. She glanced back to see Uther, Becky, and the man in the shabby coat behind her. The driver had left the driver door slightly open. Laura grabbed one side to pry it open. Uther arrived a moment later and pulled on the other side of the door. The door opened and Laura scrambled in, followed by Uther. Laura opened up the control panel, turned on the power for the door, then hit the close button. Becky slid in as the door started closing. Shabby coat was stuck outside. Oh God! Open the door! Let me in! Oh God, let me in! She turned and pulled on the door. Shabby coat punched on the door with his fists. Laura stepped forward to hit the open button, then stopped. Help me! Help! Behind him, the monster growled. It was a deep, rumbling gurgle like a motorcycle. Shabby coat was pulled back, then lifted up. His feet came off the ground and into the air. Harry Claus pulled his body from the doorway. That won't keep him busy for long. Let's get this thing fired up. She flipped a few switches on the dashboard. The lights came back on. On the tracks, half a kilometer ahead of them, it stood. An enormous shadowy figure with glowing red eyes, staring at them just beyond the headlights. I'm gonna drive this giant can of Alpo right through you, you hairy motherfucker. She hit the throttle. The train slowly began to pick up speed. As it neared the figure standing on the tracks, the creature came into sharp focus. A seven-foot-tall werewolf with long claws that dripped with blood draped on each side. Patches of gray and black fur covered his body. His torn and tattered blue jeans looked more like a loincloth. The werewolf howled and pointed at the train. You heartless tramp. Give her back to me. Now. Oh my god. What the fuck is that? Um, that's my ex-husband. I used to have a thing for bad boys. Ready yourself. He's tougher than he looks. He's tougher than he looks? The gray wolf howled again at the train as it sped towards him. Then, he calmly stepped off the tracks a moment before the collision. He dragged his claws screeching and ripping by the side of the train as it flashed past him. That can't be good. The train was at full throttle, flying towards a bend in the tracks. Just on the other side of the bend, three trees were strewn across the tracks. Laura rushed to pull the emergency brake. They blocked the tracks. We're fucked. Brace for impact. They crashed into the trees. The train flipped onto its side and rolled off the tracks. The passengers were thrown around the car, flipping and flying. Inside the wreckage, Laura lifts her head. Uther is lying beside her, contorted and broken. His eyes are open and his tongue is protruding from his mouth. There is a shrill beeping on her wrist. Laura turns off the alarm and grunts. Becky is in a crumpled heap on the other side of the car. Princess, are you okay? I don't know. I think so. I could really use a Bloody Mary and some avocado toast. If we get through this, brunch is on me. Get ready, we need to run. Laura stood up in the sideways train car. The crash had jostled a few things around. She picked up two liquor bottles and an old conductor's uniform. There is an axe on the wall next to the fire extinguisher. She took a length of wire from the emergency brake and wrapped it around her wrist. Hey you, princess, grab that axe. 
She fashioned two Molotov cocktails from the bottles and rags. She took out a lighter. Okay, Becky, stand there to the side of the doorway and swing that axe right into the head of whatever steps in here after me. Laura crawled outside, lit a bottle, and stood in front of the smashed sideways train car. She called out to the tree line. Werewolves? Ha! You're more like were-poodles, mangy fucking cowards. The gray wolf darted at her from the shadows, hissing and salivating as he reached with his bloody claws. Lighten up, furball. She threw the bottle directly at the gray wolf's head. The monster burst into flames, dropping to the ground. Then burning and whining in pain, he ran back into the dark forest. Laura retreated into the train car. She saw a pair of red eyes squint and move in closer. She backed up to the far wall. Now, princess, swing. The Taurus swung and connected with the werewolf's skull, diagonally chopping through his right eye. Ew, OMG. Did I just do that? You knocked that one right out of the park. Well done, princess. My cabin isn't far from here, but we're gonna have to run. These things move fast and can see in the dark. Now, rip that ax out of that dead werewolf's skull and let's make a break for it. The two women ran into the dark forest. A smaller werewolf closed in on Becky as they approached the small brick house. The werewolf had dark red fur. It turned its head sideways and nipped at Becky's ankles as they ran. She felt its hot breath on the back of her legs. Laura, help! Laura turned back. She unwound the emergency brake wire from her wrist and wrapped it around her other fist. She jumped on the werewolf's back, wrapping the wire around its neck. She pulled out her arms strongly and began pumping them back and forth, sawing at the werewolf's head. Becky swung the axe into the wound in the werewolf's neck. Blood shot out in spurts, covering them both as they fell with the werewolf to the lawn, its head barely attached. Then a dark howl came from the depths of the forest. Get to the house. The two women rushed into the house. It was cramped and dark. It felt more like a bomb shelter than a home. It had two layers of red brick on the outer walls. No windows, just a small slit along the wall wide enough to fit the barrel of a gun. The door had three deadbolts, two chain locks, and three latches. Can you please explain something to me? Laura smiles as she turned the last bolt. Sure, princess. Fire away. I'm safe. I mean, we are safe for the time being. Laura picked up a shotgun hanging on the wall. She walked over to a box of shells on the cabinet and started loading the gun. Strange sounds come from the back of the house. Um, what the fuck is going on? Did you really bang a werewolf? Can they do missionary and stuff, or is it like doggy style 24-7? Do they have lipstick kind of puppy dicks, or like normal circumcised man dicks? You're so gross. Here's the short version. Many years ago, I used to date this guy. He had a dark side. I guess most people do. Then I got pregnant, so I took my daughter and left. He's been looking for us ever since, saying I'm abusing her and stunting her spirituality. It's a bunch of bullshit. You have a daughter? The whimpering sounds of a wounded animal come from the back of the house. Laura points her shotgun at Becky. Oh yeah, speaking of my daughter, you should really meet her. Walk to that back room, now. What the fuck? I couldn't get back to the house of my own. You have a big mouth, Becky. I couldn't have you talking about us. Didn't we just survive a werewolf attack and now you're gonna turn on me? Shut up and walk or be dragged screaming in pain. Becky walked slowly at gunpoint down the hall. Her trembling hand wiped tears from her eyes. The door is solid steel with a small window. It creaks open to reveal a small prison cell with steel walls, a bed, toilet, and sink. A black and white TV sits on a milk crate in the far corner playing Wonder Woman cartoons. A small child sits inches away from the small TV screen. She has red eyes and is covered with a short coat of silver hair. She is chained by the neck to the wall. She jumps up elated. Oh, honey, it's not Halloween yet. She pushed the woman into the room with the barrel of the shotgun and locked the door. Laura peered through the small window. Bye-bye, princess. The werewolf child circles Becky, sniffing and growling. The child jumps at Becky's head, tearing out her throat with a sharp chomp of her fangs. Blood flowed from the wound, covering the Halloween outfit. She howled up at the ceiling. Outside, the full moon shone brightly on six massive werewolves as they approached the house. The largest of them is covered in burns. That's the house where she keeps my daughter chained like a slave. Tonight, we will set her free and bring her home to the pack. 